So as a continuation uh, from our last part, I want us to check uh, this part again. Uh, when we are measuring eternal tapers of uh, taper ring gauge, we use precision balls as we talked before. Uh, so we are asked to start the fig one, B, uh, fig 4.9, A, 4.9, B, 4.9, C, and then uh, follow the given uh, procedure whenever you are to have or you are to calculate uh, our calculations later on. This is the requirements that you are going to, to need. So if we are to check properly here what we are given, if we are given a roller down here, we are going to have the distance from the top, which is our X. This one is going to be referred as X. It is going to be having its own diameter, just like the bigger one It is going to be having its own diameter and covering a distance from the top of Y like this. This is our Y here. So if you take into consideration X and Y, they are linking up together because this is taken, remember, at the end on the top here, it's a tangent. So like this, it's a tangent here. So it means if we consider at the top of the, the one, uh, the bigger, uh, uh, if you're telling with the bigger ruler on the top there, you are going to see that this is our distance that we had before. It was covering up to the end, up to the top. So X was part of this. X is covering everything like this. X is supposed to cover everything up to, up to Y like this. This is your X. Take note about your X. This is going to be our X. So what we are going to see is that with a triangle being drawn, uh, remember the concept that we have if we are to consider that we are to draw a triangle, all right, if we are to have a right angle triangle in this case, all right, up to, up to this point, like this, all right, like this. So I'm just going to follow the concept to say if we, if this line is going to meet the tangent here, we know that it's going to be at what? At 90 degrees. If it reaches the tangent here, it's going to be at 90 degrees. So it follows that this angle is going to be also at 90 degrees there. All right? So we're going to talk about the distances. I think if we have it in form of a uh, this one, I think they uh, try to explain something that is better that we can understand. So how to test the included angle of a tapering gauge using precision balls you place the tapering gauge on the surface plate as shown in Fig 4.9, which is the one that we're given in the previous case. Now we are putting this into our calculations. We are now putting this into our calculation. All right. So this is what we are having here. If we are to take this into consideration, uh, we place a okay, place a smaller precision ball inside and measure X or those are the distances that we are given X and Y. And this is the one that we're going to have on our diagram X and Y at the same time. So like I said, this X here is uh, covering up to the end. It is supposed to go up to the end. This X is not here. It's up to the end. Yeah, I don't know how, what happened here with these guys. This is supposed to be up to the end like this. Supposed to cover up to the end like that. All right. So. From these calculations uh, that we are going to have uh, from our constructions, let's say I have constructed a radius, all right? From this point, it's a radius up to the tangent. It's a radius there, which is the same concept that we are having here if we join this up to this point. It's going to be at tangents at 90 degrees. So joining this, we are formulating a right angle triangle here. We are formulating a right angled triangle. So let's just call this point A, point B, and point C. So this is what I want you to understand about these guys here, because we are going to just need the formulas there to answer this question, but 
this is what you need there, making the right angle, triangle, I'll think, okay, this one is now a crescent. So let us just have it aside. So if we consider, we are going to see that we are going to need the distance, this one of AC. AC, it consists of this distance. It means X is involved. Remember guys, our X is supposed to be on top. So AC is involving the part of X is there and the radius. So there we have got the radius of the smaller one from here to here. We've got the radius of the smaller one. Uh, then if we move from this point up to this point, we know that X is involved there. Here, yeah, X is there. So there is, uh, there is a, there is this distance here from this point up to this point that we do not even know. But the radius of the bigger one is involved. And also the part of X is still there because X is still going up to, it's still going. So if we're another radius and this one, the part of Y at the end. So guys, look what we have there. So in order for you to have this AC, just gonna have this formula to find our AC. It is going to be the X, which is the distance. There's the one that we have between uh, this one from the smaller one up to the top. That, that will be X plus the smaller radius. Then you subtract Y plus R. Check note, guys, just like that, you're done. Don't complicate yourself. Don't complicate yourself there. So that means your AC uh, is done there, all right? Your AC is done. Then what else do we need? Uh, we also need BC, this distance of BC, the BC part from here to here. So from that BC, the one that you're going to have on your diagram is simply uh, the difference between R and R. So these are the formulas that you're going to need. And with these formulas, you can calculate whatever that you needed. So guys, I don't know. Can you just memorize these two? Just these two. We are done. Then we bring this to our diagram. So if you are to consider, this is exactly what we have here. They are asking us to calculate the included angle. So there we want the included angle. So uh, as we saw that from our constructions, we are going to have the constructions of our triangle joined from B to C, this one. I'm going to take this, this construction, guys, B, A, B, C. So we're going to have A, B, C there. So this is just going to be something like this. It must be a right angle triangle there at uh, other point B. So I've got B. Uh, this was our A, this is our C. So the right angle triangle that you use for your constructions, it includes alpha, which is the half angle. So alpha is the half angle. The included angle is the whole of this. We can just refer, refer it as theta. Here they are saying we must use this as what? As I. So I is going to be the product of two and alpha, the, the half angle, this one. So two times alpha is our included angle. So we need AC, this side of AC. And we also need the BC. So if you are to take into consideration uh, from our calculations, we said you're going to need the radius of the bigger one. So it's 35 divided by 2. That is going to be 17,5. The radius of the smaller one, uh, 25 divided by 2, which is 12,5, just like that. All right. Then here we've got our X. Remember X, the bigger distance that we have there. We've got X, 37.25. And Y is equal to what? Five millimeters. So this is what we have, guys. So we said in order for us to have AC and BC, we can use uh, those two formulas that I listed here. So this will be for AC. So we can just uh, calculate our AC straight from there. All right. So that is, uh, let us calculate our AC for our diagram, for our right angle triangle. So AC is equal to what? the sum of X and R. So we say it X and the smaller one, the sum of this, you add uh, X, where is our X here? The X and the R here, X and R. So X plus the smaller radius, then we subtract Y and the bigger radius. So it's Y plus R, just like that. 
So that is X is what? 37.25 plus R in this case, the smaller one is 12.5 minus the sum of Y, which is Y is five. So that is five plus R in this case, that is our R 17,5. So this is 17,5. So like this, we are going to have uh, the value of our AC. This is 27.25 in, in millimeters. Okay, so thus we've got our AC then. So with this AC, uh, 27.25, we need BC. So BC, we said it is the difference between the radius of the bigger minus the radius of the smaller one. So that's BC is going to be 17,5. Remember the radius of the bigger is 17,5. The smaller one is what? It's 12,5. So if I subtract this, I'm going to get five millimeters. So that's, I've got five millimeters there. So using our right angle triangle, guys, we can calculate alpha. And by calculating alpha, what is the next stage? is to calculate the included angle, which is twice alpha, two times of alpha. So from this, uh, calculate alpha. So we're gonna calculate alpha, which is our included, which is our half angle, sorry, that's our half angle. So according, this is 90 degrees. So that is the hypotenuse there. And this is the opposite. So you're gonna use the ratio of sine from our Sokatoa concept. So the sine, of alpha is equal to the opposite, which is five over the hypotenuse 27.25. So that is it. If you want to do this mathematically, guys, you do not want to struggle with these major constructions, this and that. Guys, this is it. You are done. You are done. So alpha is equal to actan. Uh, this, which is going to give us uh, 10,573. That, that's it. So we can now calculate our included angle, just like that. So the included angle is two times alpha. So our included angle is gonna be two times 10,573 degrees, which is 21,146 degrees. So as we are given that I is for included angle, you can write in words included angle is equal to. So these are the typical questions that I want you to work on, revise as much as you can exams are ahead of time and they expect you to apply this way if you want to pass your exams uh follow these steps you actually know uh exactly what they need in your mechanotechnics that's it guys till we meet again